So one of the most popular nodes within inside a build chip itself is the return node. And the return node could be used with your REST API trigger. So what will happen is in your front end no code application, you are going to make a request into your build chip workflow. Your build chip workflow is going to do everything that it's set out to do. And it's highly likely that you're going to want to send a response back to your call in front end application. Now, you know, during this particular series, I'm using Flutterflow as my front end no code at all of choice. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a really, really a simple response back with inside build chip itself. And we're going to learn how to handle that response back with inside of Flutterflow itself. There's a couple of little time saving tricks that we can use along the way to make all of that happen. And then in the next video, I'm going to put a more practical example together, which will just kind of reinforce the techniques that I'm demonstrating in this particular video. So let's now head over and let's create our workflow. OK, so let's start creating a brand new workflow. Hit the plus here and I'm just going to give this a simple uh, sort of name here. I'm going to say this is going to be a node response, something like that. Really straightforward. Hit create and we're going to the empty workflow. I'm going to add the trigger in and now we're going to add in a REST API call trigger. Hit add trigger and I'm just going to give the path a simple name here of just response. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm now going to add a return node in here directly. So just hit the plus here. So we're not going to do anything in this workflow at all. We're not going to make any decisions or anything like that. I'm just going to simply return back a response that I'm going to kind of pretend it has come from some other kind of service or some other integration you've got with inside your workflow, just to kind of demonstrate the way that we can kind of consume that information with inside Flutterflow here as a front end application. And I'll show you how to then handle all of the data with inside Flutterflow itself. But this is something that is really common, something you will do uh, very, very frequently when you're using BuildShip with a no code tool such as Flutterflow. So here we've got a status code here of 200. Now this represents that um, everything has been is accepted. It's kind of there's no errors or anything like that. So a status code of 200 is absolutely fine. Of course, it might be that, for example, you might be doing a security check or something like that with inside your workflow. And of course, you are free to kind of return back a different type of kind of error response. And of course, you can handle that with inside of Flutterflow yourself. So um, with inside the conditional, you can kind of say, is this is it successful, which means it's a 200, which will go down the left hand side or if it's something like a, a 400 then a, a, a technically that that is not a kind of a status okay equivalent and it'll end up down in then the negative direction so um, i can pinpoint that and show you that inside flutterflow if you've not seen that before so with inside the value, this is everything that we are going to return back for this particular response. You can see here we've got cash in here. I'll cover that in a later video on, on the caching side of things, but we're going to focus on these two fields here, which are the most important. So everything that I can put in here will be the response back that will then come back to my front end application. So for example, if this is a kind of a, a uh, like a JSON response, which would, would be something like an output, maybe like assistant AI, or it could be some other response from an API that you're calling out, which will demonstrate in the next video, then this will come then as a JavaScript object, which we can return back in JSON format to the front end calling application. So we know that it's already represented by curly braces. And, you know, if I was to come in here and type message like that, colon, I can just say hello, then of course, that can then be consumed by the front end application. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of paste some kind of dummy sort of JSON response in here, and then we can consume that with inside our Flutterflow application. So I'm just going to go and paste that now. So there we go, just pasted it in there and you can see here I've got some data. Let me just open that up a little bit more. You can see here that we've kind of got like um, some curly braces here. We've kind of got our first kind of uh, sort of keys and values here of everything that we've got. And then here you can see we've got this one called suggestions, which is an array, is a list of different kind of entries. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of package all of this up with inside a Flutterflow so we can then reference that with inside our application. But this is just a stereotypical kind of response you would get back as an API response. So what I'm just going to do is I'm just going to leave that as it, as it is. I've just pasted that in there. You can see I've just got JavaScript down in, in here. I can then just close that down. And I know that now if I was now trigger this particular workflow, if I just hit test workflow, once that's done, it's build and it's execution. You can see that this is now returning this back now as a status 200. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to ship this now itself. So I'm just going to get that up and running with inside my particular project. And then, of course, now I've got that, I can now copy the endpoint URL and I can now take that back into Flutterflow. I can kind of get everything configured inside the application. So let's head over to Flutterflow now and I'll show you how to consume this in a really, really easy way with inside Flutterflow.
Okay, so on screen at the moment is a really, really simple Flutterflow application. And this application, what it's going to allow us to do is going to allow us to click this little button here that's going to make a call out to our build chip workflow. The response that's going to come back will be that JSON data that we saw applied earlier. And then we're going to want to somehow kind of get that data displayed within inside our Flutterflow application. There's a number of different things that we can do to make that happen. So let's now walk through and then do that together. And of course, if you'd like to follow along, then the link is in the description to this particular starter project. And of course, the final project there is well so you can kind of cross check and make sure that you got everything right okay so first thing i'm going to do is create me api call there on the left hand side just choose api calls hit the add we're going to go create api call i'm just going to give this a name of node response something like that it could be anything you like just paste that uh, build chip workflow endpoint url in there and hit the add call now i can move over to response and test and i can just test the api call and you can see here that i've got everything now positioned nicely on the right hand side. Now what I'm just gonna do is I'm now gonna kind of copy all of this content here into the clipboard. So you either just do a, an Apple C or Control C there to kind of have all of that selected. Uh, and then what I can now do is I can now use that in just a moment to create a flood of flow, a data type, or at least a series of a data types. And I'll show you how that works. So on the left hand side, let's move over to where it says data types. And um, in recent times inside flood of flow, they've got this very, very convenient button now called create a data type type from a JSON. Now by selecting that, I'm just gonna give this a name of response. Of course, it could be anything you like. I'm just gonna call it response. I'm gonna sort of Apple V, uh, Control V that actually into the uh, this, this kind of display here. I'm gonna hit the create option. Now you can see what's happened is now we've kind of got this response kind of object here, which has kind of got these two kind of fields. And then we've kind of got the suggestions, which is a list of, and then suggestions. And with the size suggestions, you can see I've got all of these kind of data types. So now I've kind of got this like, this tight contract now between the responses coming back from build chip and then how I'm gonna then handle that with inside of flow to flow itself. There is a, a kind of like almost like a one-to-one -one relationship there with the response that comes back. And now I can use that to my advantage then when it comes to then configuring the kind of the, the look and feel or the use of this data within inside the UI itself. Okay, so before I can invoke the API, I'm gonna to need to create a page state variable inside my application to store the data that comes back from the API kind of request. So let's move over to the widget tree here. Let's go to the home page. make sure that's selected. On the right hand side, just choose that and choose add field. And I'm just going to call this response. Again, I'm just kind of matching this up then with the, the name that I've kind of set as my custom data type. Now the type of that is then gonna be of data type. And of course, I'm gonna say the type of that is gonna be a response. So just make sure you choose response and hit confirm. Once you've got that, we've now got that in place and we can now start invoking the API call. So where it says get response from build chip, if that's selected, move over to then the action flow editor, open up that. And the first thing I'm gonna to want to do is add our API call in. So choose add action. Let's do a search for API call like that. And then here's the group name. We just choose no response. That's all that we've got back. I'm just gonna change this to API result because it's the only one that I've got in this particular project here. Now, of course, that's now gonna make the kind of request. The result is gonna come back. This status 200, which I was referring to previously, is gonna move in this particular direction. And of course, if it wasn't succeeded, it might be another error or a problem, a different status code, uh, and it could end up down in this particular particular directions. So of course, you're going to want to handle that gracefully in most applications, you know, a little alert or something like that. But um, for now, we're just going to handle the happy path scenario. So just going to hit the plus here. Now I'm going to choose add action. And I'm just going to do a search here for state because we're going to update the page state. So we've got all of that data that's kind of come back. We've got it there in memory. Now we're going to want to now persist this to this particular kind of uh, state variable. So choose add fields here, just go to response. Now we go to select update data type. We say it's going to be a set value, choose the value to set. We just need to move down here to then action outputs. And we've got the API result here, just select that. Now the API response options, now this is gonna be as a data type itself, so just select that. Now by hitting confirm here, it comes up with this current variable is not valid. Now. The reason why we're getting this, and this is because there's an additional setting that we need to set with inside the API. Now I did this on purpose because I wanna kind of draw attention to this because it's a really, really important step. I'm just gonna cancel that. I'm just gonna close that down. I'm gonna go back into our API calls. I'm gonna move over to the response and test. So this is the bit that kind of users I've noticed in certainly in the No Code Academy and uh, on the community of inside uh, YouTube that uh, have kind of made reference to that they can't quite uh, sort of figure this out. So we've got this option here called data type. What you need to do is 
you need to set this to be turned on because you need to kind of map and, and, and kind of say that, look, the result that comes back, I'm going to want to use the kind of power of Flutterflow to automatically do all of the hard work for me and convert that to the response type here. Okay, that's the data type that I've configured previously. So by just hitting save now, I can now go back over now to then the widget tree, I can go back into the actions, I can go back to update page state, I can go to value to set here. And now what I can do now is I can go down here, I can go down to the action outputs. And I've got the API result here, just select that. And here, you can, I can now say data type and by hitting confirm, Everything is golden, everything is set, there's no errors coming up. So we now know that we've got this kind of this, this, this more contracted based kind of uh, uh, response now that is now part of the page state variable, which is now just called response. And once we've got that, of course, we can now then reference the fields and everything side with inside that data type itself. Now we're gonna move on to the next bit where we're gonna now then present that information onto the UI. Okay, so back within the widget tree, then we can now just move on to the items column. So just select that. And we're going to now want to set this up now to kind of create these dynamic children from the data that is now come back and being persisted within that page state variable that we created earlier. So with item column selected, move up to here and let's select this option here called generate dynamic children. I'm going to give my variable name a name of just item, but the value, this is the most important bit now. We're going to go into here, we're going to select page state. We're going to go to the response. Now the available options, we're going to say data structure field. So we've kind of got the, the top level response, but we want to kind of get into the kind of the array called suggestions that we've got there. because we know that's a list of different suggestions. So go there and go to select field. We're going to say suggestions here, and we're just going to hit confirm. It's as simple as that. Hit save. We're going to get this message come up. We're going to press okay here, and now we're going to get this ghosted look with inside here. So that is certainly representing that we've got dynamic items that's coming up here. So one final thing that we need to do is choose a locations text. With that selected, we can go up to where it says text here, just select that. Now what we can now do is we can now select on this where it says item, select that. We can say the available option. Now we're gonna say data structure field. We're gonna to wanna to kind of reference the field directly here. Go to select the field and we're just gonna say a location name. Um, I'm just gonna give this a UI builder value here. Now all this is really doing is this is really just kind of converting, um, you know, something that won't look particularly attractive um, for, for design time, we can just call this a location a name itself. So again, this is just something that is only displayed inside the design environment. You don't need to worry about that. Just hit confirm and you can now see that I've got that here. Now, if I was to run this particular application up, which we will do in just a moment, we should be able to hit this button and then see these locations come from our build chip kind of uh, workflow. So let's, uh, let's find this up in test and let's give this a whirl. Okay, so here we are then in test mode, just running in the web browser for now. I think it uh, keeps it nice and simple. So there we go. I can just hit this get response from build chip here. And there we go. We got the three items that's come back as the actual response itself. So that's a really, really simple technique in order to get kind of API results into your Flutterflow application using the power of data types to make sure that we kind of got this like one-to-one -one relationship there with the response that comes back from the build chip workflow.